is just as much a part of what Jesus died to produce as forgiveness of sins. Jesus came to heal your body. God wants you well. Jesus wants you well. There are people who say that any type of healing today is of the devil. And yet Deuteronomy 28 says healing is a blessing. Sickness is a curse. You know, in Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20, it says in the last days that people will call evil good and good evil, sweet, bitter, and bitter, sweet, light, dark, and darkness, light. We are living in that day. And not only are unbelievers perverting everything and saying that, you know, being married to one person is wrong and that how outdated and out of touch you are and stuff like that. Not only are unbelievers calling evil good, but Christians. There are some Christians calling healing and deliverance and joy and peace and victory as being bad. And they glorify sickness and poverty and sorrow and grief and say that God puts these things on you. That is not the model that is given in Scripture. Jesus went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Jesus would not fit into many denominations today because He never made a person sick. He never refused to heal a person. Matter of fact, you can go to the 8th chapter of the book of Matthew. Let me just read this for you. And a man came to Jesus who had leprosy. Behold, there came a leper and worshiped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. This is Matthew 8, 2. And in verse 3, Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. Did you know it was appropriate for this man to say, if you want to, if you, if you desire to, you can make me clean, because it wasn't clear that it was God's will to heal every person. In the Old Testament, healing was not a part of the atonement yet. The atonement by Jesus had not been made. Now, there was lots of people healed in the Old Testament, but it was just individuals every once in a while. There were promises made about how God wanted to heal people, but it was all dependent upon them obeying. Again, you could go back to Deuteronomy chapter 28 and see that very clearly, that you had to obey and keep the law in order to receive the benefit of healing. But in the New Testament, it's now revealed that it is God's will to heal everyone. 3 John chapter 1 verse 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. That shows you it is God's will. He wishes this above everything else for you to prosper and be in health. That is God's will. But at this time, Jesus hadn't died. The New Testament hadn't been written. It was appropriate for this man to say, if you will, God, I don't know what your will is. But Jesus said, I came to do the will of the Father, that if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. How did Jesus respond to a man with leprosy? He said, I will be thou clean. And now that we have the example of Jesus, it's wrong. It is misrepresenting God for people to say that it is not God's will to heal everybody. Healing is a part of the atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ, just as much as forgiveness of sins is. Fear played a big role in my life. It was, it was tormenting. My father was an alcoholic. He was a medicinal drug addict. We never knew how he was going to come home. It all culminated to one night. My mom had made a dinner for him, and he didn't like the dinner. He picked up the table, threw it against the wall, starts screaming and yelling, goes to my mom with a knife to her throat, and we're screaming, saying, please don't, please don't, don't do that to her, don't kill her. So he went into the back room for a minute. My mom said, girls, get your coats, we're going now. Julianne was both a fitness instructor and the wife of a Hollywood producer. 
but neither exercise nor a fast-paced L.A. lifestyle could keep her from the fear that took root in her life at childhood. This fear eventually took the form of fibromyalgia, an incurable disease that causes widespread muscle pain, fatigue, and mood swings. This is the healing journey of Julianne Hartman. There was so much pain in my body, and it came out of nowhere. I started with a lot of lower back pain, I started with pain in my legs, pain in my hands, and then it felt like I had the flu 24-7. We were church-going people. We knew that Jesus Christ promised healing. We knew that uh, healing was ours, that kind of thing. But there was such an emergency atmosphere around it. The first thing was we have to go to the doctor. They said I had lupus. They said I had fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia just doesn't come on you. It comes from a lot of years of a lot of emotional abuse on yourself. I chose exercise to rid me of anxiety and fear. That's why I kept a job and classes and dancing and all this stuff and working out till two in the morning that I wouldn't have time to feel fear or anxiety or anything. So I just kept running faster and faster and faster. The older I got, the faster I would run. I was used to working out five, six hours a day, six days a week. When I started not feeling well, I couldn't do any of that. So it was really shortly after she stopped, I started noticing a huge change. The word despair is the word I would use. There was like a despair that came around her, and I don't know where that came from. In the mornings, he would leave me as my head would be in my hands, and I'd just be crying. And then he would come home, and he would find me in the same position. I thought I was losing my daughter, and um, it was just, it was hard. I was an actress, so I was good at acting. And when the girls would get home from school, I'd say, okay, what'd you do today? Like, tell me about your day. I don't think I heard any of it because I was in so much pain and I was feeling so sick. And then the fear always because I wasn't feeling good and I was like, God, I hope I can make it through this day kind of thing. My day planner was filled with doctor appointments. $300,000 on alternative doctors, holistic doctors, they just kept saying, we don't know what to do. Here, take this pill. Here, take this. This went on for three years. Meanwhile, I was going to every healing line that I could. I would say, God, why am I not getting healed? What is wrong? Why are you not healing me? Why? What I do? What do I need to do to get healed? I don't understand. The healing wasn't coming. The medicine, whatever she would take, wasn't working. She was crying every day. And she said, I think you should leave me. Had I not had Christ in my life, I probably would have left. But I know that perfect love casts out fear. He said, I made a commitment to you, and I will never leave you. Whatever we needed to do, wherever she needed to go, whatever we needed to pray, when you've done all to stand, we had to stand. Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on... And so I was home a lot, and I would leave the TV on and it would constantly play every ministry possible. Well, this man came on, and he was really boring. And I don't know what the teaching was, but it was him saying that there was a man that had Parkinson's. And so Andrew says, so I say to him, just tell your hand to stop shaking. And he said, okay. So he said, hand, stop shaking. And it did. So I'm watching this going, with my remote control ready to turn him off, what? But there was something about it, though, that was really, like, just caught me. I went online, and I started looking at the website. Well, what is this guy about? Like, who is he? And that was it. I watched her as she watched every Andrew episode. She downloaded everything online she could get. Those healing journeys were amazing. I watched them over and over. I watched Nikki's probably 50 times all the symptoms that she had of being sensitive to cleaning solutions, hair products, lotions, perfumes. I couldn't be around anything that had a smell. She was the same way. And to watch that girl sit in a bedroom at the end that was painted was like a miracle. Title, God Wants You Well. We've already dealt with the fact that healing is a part of Christ's atonement, which means that it's not optional. When I listen to God Wants You Well, I'm like, wait a minute. And you've already got it? I'm like, wait, 
This isn't God holding out on me. This is me not receiving what God already did for me. There was a two-week period where I was like, that's it. I am not moving out of this house. I'm canceling everything and I'm just gonna listen from the time my kids go to school till the time I've gotta go pick them up. And I would sit on my kitchen table from eight till 2.30 and just listen over and over and over. For two weeks I did that. I started walking through my hallways and I'm telling you, if my dogs could talk what they witnessed, I walked through those hallways going, in the name of Jesus, stop being numb. Numbness, you are dead. You get out of my body now, in the name of Jesus. Get out of my body. Pain, back pain, get out of my body. Whatever it was, headache, you know, brain. You are a perfect brain. God gave me a perfect brain. You need to function the way you were made. I don't care what's been spoken over me, what anybody told me, what anybody said I had. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke all of that. And body, you come back to life now. And I just kept doing that over and over. And I'd walk through my house. Then I'd go back to all the scriptures that I wrote down where Andrew had walked me through. It's funny, when you live with something for so long and you're so used to seeing it, you don't really notice when it starts to change until you like realize like one day, hey, she's not complaining about her knees anymore. And then I'd say, hey, she's crying a lot less. Was that a smile on her face? There was a smile there. She would laugh. I hadn't heard her laugh in probably years. And I, when you hear your wife laugh after so long, that is just the most amazing thing. What I always say is like, it was a progressive healing. But the only reason why it was progressive is because I made it progressive. You know, if you can't trust your father, how are you gonna trust a God that you can't see? It was my dad, I just couldn't trust him. And I think that that's kind of where it all stemmed from. It wasn't just the healing on the outside. It was teaching me about who I was in Christ. And that was the missing link. It was a bit of a journey, but at the end of the journey, my daughter was back. Julianne's healing has inspired her family to discover all God has for them. Every day, they renew their minds to God's Word, accompanied by the teachings of Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College. I work out to Andrew, Butch works out to Andrew. We have him on our computers, we have him on our phones, we have him on our cars. I always knew in my heart that my kids would go to Karis Bible College. I know that establishing a firm foundation in Christ as a young adult, like that's just the best place to do it. I know the Creative Arts School is opening up soon, like the third year. And so taking like my passion in arts and creativity and putting that with my faith and then being able to go to a school where they tailor right to that is really exciting. The Hollywood industry is an industry that everybody wants you to fail, but when you don't fail, they wonder why isn't this person failing? Why is he succeeding? Because of the prosperity I've had, I've been able to point them to Jesus Christ. And that's through Andrew. We started listening to the teaching of don't limit God times 10. And man, if that doesn't make you want to run down the street with your hands up in victory going, I'm doing it. I am not going to limit God anymore. Andrew said that God said to him, you're limiting me by your small thinking. And I thought, I'm going to apply this to my career. So we started the NOOG network. It's N-O-O-G network. And we call it a safe place for kids. What we want to do is the money that comes from the network is going right into the dorms, after the dorms, whatever else Andrew is. I am so on board with his vision. When you're a partner and you give into that, anyone who gets saved as a result of that ministry, that goes on your heavenly account. That's the exciting part. The Noog Network is just one of the many ways the Hartmans are advancing God's kingdom. Their nonprofit organization, Hartman House, builds homes and provides food, education, and spiritual growth to those fighting poverty all over the world. And to come out on the other side, first thing he told me was don't let your heart be troubled. Going back to this same principle I was just talking about. The Hartmans also hold weekly Bible studies in LA where they share Andrew's messages with their community. Through her experience, Julianne feels especially called to encourage women to apply Christ's atonement in every area of their lives. The world dictates to you that as a woman, when you get older and you go through menopause, Basically, you become this emotional, crazy person, and then you, your insides dry up and you die, basically. 
And it's really important for me to talk about this because I know that through the Word of God, through Andrew's teaching, I'm not talking just one teaching, I'm talking about all his teachings. He will show you who you are, even though he's a man, he doesn't speak about menopause, he doesn't speak about the female issues, but it doesn't matter. He speaks the Word of God, which covers all of that. And that's important for women my age to know. We don't have to succumb to what the world says is supposed to happen to us as we get older. As Julianne and her family continue to change the world, they never forget that their story was made possible by the friends and partners of Andrew Womack Ministries. Because of you, Julianne is now living her life fearless and free of fibromyalgia. Started adding up all those bills. They were over $300,000. But Andrew's teaching was free. You sit under the Word for four hours a day for two or three years, I guarantee you, you are going to have God speak to you and start revealing purpose to you. God has a purpose to train you in what you're called to do, and I tell you, Karis Bible College is the place for that. South Africa has three Karis Bible Colleges, and 2022 enrollment is now open. We have locations in Cape Town, in Heidelberg in the Western Cape, and in Johannesburg. To find out more about each location, visit awmsa.net forward slash Bible dash college. If you have a desire for Bible college, God's the one that put it there. Imagine having to take in a gorgeous sunset one cloud at a time. Imagine seeing the world through a straw. You've just experienced rod cone dystrophy, a rare and incurable disease which often leads to blindness. This is the story of Bianca, a young woman in Norway, and her fight to have her eyes open. When I was a child, I could see everything, but the field was going smaller, 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 smaller. And at the end, I only had the vision here in the central part. In 2008, I had the, the last examinations. And then they told me it was 10 and there it was only 15% left. It was nothing you can do about it and it was a serious problem. It can be worse. Almost blind or blind. No, that was not a nice doctor's report. During this time, Bianca and Gerd attended a small church in Hamar, where they met Robert and Elizabeth Muren. Bianca was attracted to Elizabeth's Christ-centered confidence and had to know what her secret was. She gave me her visit card and then she wrote on the back side, go to the website of Andrew Womack because we have learned a lot of it. It changed my life and I think it is what you need. We were sitting there and saw the first teaching and it was the starting of the teaching, Spirit, Soul and Body. When I hear it, I think, why does I struggle 20 years to figure it out? And now I'm hearing all of it and that's all I need. It was a big revelation. And it totally, totally changed our minds and our lives. After that, we saw some other teachings. God wants you well and also you have already got it. We heard so much new thing and we heard that God has do everything already and uh, it was a very big change in our life. Now I realize that, okay, my eyes, I don't need to have this. Why I have these eyes if God already done it? He, it is finished. This is our third tape in a series that I have entitled, You've Already Got It. And this tape is entitled, It's in the Spiritual Realm. The first two tapes. All throughout her house, Bianca posted scriptures of God's promises to help keep her mind focused on all Jesus had provided. One day, this paid off when Andrew's revelation finally became her own. I was sitting and reading the Bible, and then I realized that, wow, what I have, it's so amazing. And I just started to praise God about it and thank Him for everything He's done and that He don't need to do something to heal me. 
that he did already do that on the cross. Andrew told, just speak to your problem. So I actually speaking to my eyes and say, eyes, you were healed in the name of Jesus. So you must see, you must see now you are healed, you know? <laughs> And then I opened my eyes and it was just like, it was clear and unclear, but it was coming and coming and going. But I was just praising God. I closed my eyes again and I was praising God and thanking Him for what He has done. And, and then I, I told my eyes again, you are healed in Jesus' name. And then I was opening my eyes and they were totally clear. I could see everything. And I think, wow, that is so amazing. I could see the trees outside, the flowers, the, everything. It was so good. I thought I can see Gert. He was working 30 kilometers from our house. So I drove with the car to see him. And then I told him, hey, you, go with me. And then there was standing a car, maybe 20 meters, I don't know. And I told him, uh, you know that sign? And I take the numbers of the sign of the car. And he looked at me, what's happened? I'm healed. <laughs> I can see everything. It is so strange. And we were so glad and I testing it out whole day. The first week I had actually a headache because I was seeing so much. I was totally healed, but in the days after, Sometimes it just going back to the old. I was looking and then, oh, it's not clear anymore. And then I felt like it's going till the old again. I was mad about my eyes because it was like the devil is knocking, see if I'm opened. And I say, no, I'm closed. <laughs> and I say it, Lily. I am closed, I am healed. So eyes you must see in Jesus' name. And then whoosh, it's opened again. But it's happened a couple of times. But now it's fine, it's never coming back again. Bianca and her family have been forever changed after Andrew's teaching pointed them to the true gospel. Not willing to keep this to themselves, they share Andrew's message with their church every Tuesday, often accompanied by Robert and Elizabeth. To this day, they are good friends. They have also shared Andrew's teachings with Maud, a young girl who was staying with them. She was really struggling in her life. And then she moved to us and uh, three weeks later, she became born again. We bought him some books in Holland, the new you and the Holy Spirit. It was a new process. And now in August, she is moving out to going to Carriage College in Belfast. It was very nice for us to see this change so fast and to deliver a young girl to this Bible school, it was the best for us what we can think of. And Maud was only the beginning. Bianca and Gerd are starting a ministry to help struggling young mothers in Norway keep their baby as an alternative to having an abortion. Their idea was inspired by Water Springs Ranch, an organization supported by Andrew Womack Ministries that provides Christian homes and nurturing to abused and neglected children. From seeing life through a straw to a vision certified better than 2020, Bianca now sees the world with eyes of love and compassion. Thanks to the free teachings made available by Andrew's partners, Bianca has had both her physical and spiritual eyes opened. She now uses her testimony to help others see the free gift of God's unconditional love and grace. If you sit under the Word for four hours a day for two or three years, I guarantee you, you are going to have God speak to you and start revealing purpose to you. Caris Bible College first year sets your foundation in the Word, but second year builds upon your transformative journey with courses aimed at teaching you to share what you have learned with the world in a practical way. Students also engage in workshops designed to help you fine-tune and practice skills such as public speaking as well as local and international mission trips. To find out more about our different Caris second year program options, visit awmsa.net forward slash Bible dash college. I was coming back from a business appointment and it was really a bad day. I mean, it was snowing, it was cold. 
In addition to blunt trauma, Scott suffered hypothermia and would have died on the side of the road had it not been for a nursing student who happened to be driving home early from school. He had tubes everywhere. I didn't know what to do, but I just grabbed his hand. Very early on, it looked very grim uh, because of how many surgeons were in the room, um, unable to stop the bleeding. Scott's diagnosis included sepsis, collapsed lungs, and a severed femoral artery, which bled out 29 units of blood, three times his body's capacity. This is specifically for pastors. No matter the questions of life and whatever challenge we face, the answer is always within, and the weight of the answer will always be greater than the need present. Antiwomic Ministries South Africa is proud to announce a course called our Pastor Serve Program, which is free to all lead South African pastors throughout the country. That you may be interested and have a heart's desire to be discipled, Call us on 021-914-1110 or visit us on our website on awmsa.net. Look forward to the journey we'll walk with you as you enroll in the Pastors Serve program. Hi, my name is Annalina Kowa. I'm the director for Andrew Womack Ministry South Africa. And with me, I have my husband, Isaac Akowa, who is the African Regional Director. Well, thank you for tuning into the program tonight. And I hope that you have been blessed in you discovering that it is God's will for you to be well. Now we just want to encourage you through this time to dive more into the Word and really be strengthened that even in the midst of all that might be going through, that you will always remember that God wants you well. Now Andrew has resources on the topic of God wants you well in the form of a study guide, book, DVDs and CDs. So please, we will encourage you to make yourselves available for these products, they will be a great blessing to you. Now for all our free materials as well, you can visit us on awmsa.net for all of Andrew's free materials. The ministry has offices with Keres Bible Colleges in three locations here in Africa, Zimbabwe, Uganda, and South Africa. If you are unable to study at any of these locations, we also have distance learning available. For more information, please visit our website, awmsa.net. We would like to take a moment just to say thank you to our partners for your partnership, because without you, none of this would have been possible. Not only are you co-laboring with this ministry, but you're also co-laboring with the Lord into getting this message out into Africa, as well as the rest of the world. Thank you for tuning in tonight. We will see you next week, same time.